If you're thinking about getting into model railroading or you're already an addict, boy, do we have a project for you. In this episode, we actually finish something starting right now. Hey, welcome to It's My Railroad, the how-to show for regular people. Hey, if you haven't already done it, how about pushing that subscribe button? We have new episodes coming out every Thursday morning at 6 a.m. California time. Don't want you to miss a single thing. We are really having fun rehabbing the logging camp on my layout. There's plenty of community discussion, interaction, sharing tips. It's a great time. You don't want to miss it. Come on in and join us. And for those of you thinking about checking out of this episode at about three minutes and 16 seconds, uh, I think it's a big mistake. You need to stick around till towards the end because we have a major announcement that we're really excited about. And if you leave now, you're going to miss it. So let's talk about what we're going to do in this week's episode. If you watched last week's episode in its entirety, you'll see that at the end, we kind of cut it off abruptly. Uh, that's because your buddy Steve over here gets so long-winded sometimes. I made so much content that it was actually uh, too long for one episode. So I just cut it in half. Boom, part one. Boom, part two is today. In this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the track, weather the track, and come up with this really cool look I think you're going to like. And then we're going to glue all the logs to the bottom of it in anticipation of stabbing that sucker onto the hillbilly bridge. Now, next week, we will actually stab that sucker onto the hillbilly bridge, I promise. But for now, let's just go see what's happening in the hobby room and get on it. So now what we wanna do is, uh, is go through and, and paint this. And, and here's some thoughts on that. Uh, normally, if we're going to uh, paint our, our rails, paint the, the track we're putting down, we'll put down the road bed and then we'll lay down the rails. And then we come through and either, either airbrush on paint, uh, railroad type brown is pretty common. We're going to use something a little different this time. Uh, or if you don't have an airbrush and you know you don't have a ventilated environment, just come through with a brush and just just paint it, and and that's all fine and good. And I've kind of done both of those things on my layout uh, on the BSR. The problem here is, if you recall, we are going to end up with something that looks like this, right? And these logs right here are sitting right under the rails. So if I airbrush this, what'll happen? I'll get paint on these logs. Kind of kills this whole million hours I spent on getting my logs to look pretty. Uh, if I go to brush it on, I'm concerned that my brushing skills aren't that great and I'll end up dripping paint down on the logs. So uh, unfortunately, uh, well not unfortunately, just the way it works is we need to go through and paint this in advance. So like I said, I'm gonna do it just a little differently than normal because the whole rest of the layout's got railroad tie brown paint on it. Uh, those rails in the timeline of the world are probably newer anyway, so that's fine and dandy, kind of well-maintained. But uh, up here in the logging camp, kind of crap rails, uh, frankly. So let's go ahead and see how we're gonna do that. I have some paint that I bought at um, uh, Hobby Lobby, actually. And it's, the color of it is called licorice. It's called licorice reglisi negro. I don't know what all that means, but this is the paint we're using. Um, but you know, the wife and I are into crafty stuff. We're into uh, different things. And so I just bought this because I thought it was kind of a cool color. And I'm gonna start painting these railroad ties with this, a little blacker. But what we may do is get some of that gray we had and just dry brush a smidge of gray on there, kind of make a different effect. Come the end of the day, it may look like crap and we're gonna start over. But um, for right now, we're gonna give this a try. Look how that comes out, that paint. I almost feel like uh, I should be Rembrandt or something right now because it's like the kind of paint you'd paint uh, on a canvas or something. But luckily, we have a water-based paint and I have a water brush and we just start painting on there and that paints pretty thick I don't need to paint so much on the bottoms because you're not really going to see that in my opinion 
and I don't really care that I'm getting paint on the top of the rails because what we're going to do, just like we would normally, is we're going to come back through, we're going to buff that paint off of there um, so that, you know, we actually have some electrical current flowing into our locomotive. So I just give it some paint. I, I'm wetting it down. Uh, I'm experimenting here again, forgive me, but uh, I've never used this paint for this before. And you know, if I was an expert, I'd be like, ladies and gentlemen, this is how you do it and uh, blah, blah, blah. But you know, I'm not. Other than the stupid voice, uh, I have nothing in common with those people. I make this up as I go along. So we're painting, we're painting. Okay. Now, when we get up here to the turnout, here's what we have to concern ourselves with at this juncture. Right here, these, these um, switch points make contact with the rail. If I get paint down in there, what's going to happen is I'm going to lose the electrical contact between the rail and that switch rail. Not the end of the world necessarily because um, these back here, which are called the heels, transfer electricity from this rail onto the switch point. That's good times, but if for some reason that current doesn't make it this way, I need it on that way. Now, when we wire this up, I'm going to show you a way I do it where it kind of makes sure that I don't um, end up with problems with all of that. But uh, for right now, let's not you know contribute to potential problems by painting these heels or painting into those switch points. All right? We'll just sort of steer clear of that for now and maybe get a smaller brush once all this is installed and come back and touch that up. And in some cases, to be honest with you, I haven't even, uh, I haven't even touched it up. I've just left it there. And to the naked eye, depending on where the turnout is, sometimes you can't even tell that it didn't get painted. Now, you know, if you get paint in there, uh, the heels have always been a problem for me if I got paint in them, but the uh, switch point's not so bad. It just means you got to go through with an X-Acto knife or something and scrape that down to, to, so it makes contact again. And frankly, for me, the only way I know that it doesn't work is, uh, you know, when it doesn't work, when I run a locomotive over there and he just stops at the turnout. I'm like, what the heck? And then um, I ask the conductor and he goes, hey, dude, um, you screwed up your turnout. And that's always embarrassing when um, your conductors are, are talking to you like you're an idiot. Okay, something I just thought of that I need to keep in mind is the fact that we're pretty much getting the top of these ties. I'm not certain we're getting the sides of the ties in here. So I think maybe take a little paint and come back in like this. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I know it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of like, hey, dude, you just painted black paint on black railroad ties. Well, yeah, but we're not quite done yet. We're getting there. Let's do the same thing on the bottom of the turnout. Being careful not to get this throw rod right here. I don't know if I, uh, hold on a second. There you go. Not to get this throw rod um, painted and stuck in there. I, man, I've done that. I've glued that sucker down and uh, I've broken it free every time. But um, at what cost? brothers and sisters what cost so the points are sitting right up in here so we'll come back further so we don't get the points painted and careful around the heels okay that is a blackly acrylicy um, track it looks kind of oily it looks kind of yeah, this looks kind of yucky, which is what we want, frankly. That's, I'm going for yucky. That's, that's the effect. Hey, Steve, what look are you going for? And then I just say yucky, and then people go, oh, okay, I missed a spot here. I'm going to just, we'll let this dry a little bit, and then I'm going to come back and give it another treatment with maybe another color. Okay, I'm going to try something new, something I've never done before. Uh, this whole logging camp, I guess, uh, consists of stuff I've never done before. But I saw... 
Cody Grivno on Model uh, from Model Railroad on Model Railroad Video Plus. Um, he had just painted the rails for their Canadian um, national layout they're working on, and then he went back through and he sort of randomly painted ties a different color. Now this is a, a super detailed level. Now, if you got like a million ties on your layout, it would take you forever. But I want to just experiment with that a little bit. I'm going to take some gray and dry brush. Dry brushing basically, if you guys don't know, it's you, you get paint on your brush and you brush it till it's almost gone and it leaves just enough where you can go in and just sort of lightly hit something with it and it doesn't leave much paint behind. So I'm going to just go every few here and as my paint peters out I'll just keep moving around because I don't want it to all look the same is what I'm trying to get away from here. But by putting this gray in there, here's what I'm hoping to achieve. I am hoping that it will start making it look like the railroad ties are sort of, uh, some are newer, some are older, um, they've had to replace some because they're, they're icky or, or whatever, um, and make it just a subtle difference, not nothing um, hugely apparent. Uh, try to keep it off the rails too, by the way, because obviously the rails didn't turn gray. Um, kind of like this. I think. And so you kind of see what's happening there, just kind of how the gray is, is sort of forming up on the on the ties. Now here's the cool thing about this, um, it, at least what I'm looking forward to, is this gray um, is gray. And ultimately though, we kind of need a little brown in here, but that brown is going to come from the dirt we're going to put on here later. Um, this is in the mountains, and, and there's going to be dirt all over the place, and so some of that dirt is going to end up falling on these railroad ties. And when they do, what that's going to end up doing is, is adding that, 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 that final layer. So there's going to be subtle changes, I'm hoping, in, uh, in the railroad tie structure that really make it look like um, some of these get replaced at some point. Or at least they're not all, you know, all brand new, all kind of hooked in right now kind of thing. I keep wiping that uh, off the top of the uh, the rail there. I just don't know that I want the gray paint on there right now for whatever reason. We can always wipe it off later too. So as this is going, I'm, I'm already starting to see something I like here. It's 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 turning um, kind of kind of weathery. And if weathery is a word, I'll use it. If it's not a word, then make up your own. On there, maybe a little bit more back in this one. But I have to paint the whole tie, I figure, um, at one time because they didn't replace like from here to the rail, you know, they replaced the whole tie if they replaced it at all. So if we're looking close and it's again, it's in scale, hard to see, but maybe you can see kind of how those ties are looking a little different as we move forward. It, it's pretty neat if you ask me, uh, even if you didn't, I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to go through right now and just finish doing this and then we're going to see how that, um, what it looks like when we're done. All right. Something else I'm trying here, and I, and I, I kind of like where it's going, is I got a bunch of water on the brush, a bunch of this water, and just touch the gray nice and wet, and then just touch the railroad tie and sort of watch the gray travel through the, uh, the grain of the railroad tie. It, it's kind of, it's weird. It's kind of getting down in there and actually making it look less like it was painted, in my opinion, and more like it's just weathered. That's pretty cool. Let's see if I can get that effect to happen back here on all of this. Let's see, this is too dry. Yeah, it, it looks better. When, when we get to the, the, the big part of the layout, when we put all the rest of the track in, we're going to do this water method, I think. This is looking pretty good right now. And the thing is, because the paint sort of runs out and the water does, it kind of has this varying effect of some of it is thicker, some of it's thinner, it's more gray, it's less gray. It's almost random the way it's traveling through there right now. Um, all right, just a couple more to do. Well, come the end of the day, uh, that's what we ended up with right there. Um, 
sort of weathered-ish looking railroad ties. Now those ties that you see missing right there, that's all fine and dandy. Once this is all set in place, just like we would normally do, we'll paint some ties in advance and just slide them in there. Um, but for right now, I don't think we necessarily need them. And so you've got some ties that are looking like they're, they're relatively new, some that look like they're relatively old. And I'm just like, I'm getting carried away here. I'm almost thinking, as this dries, I may want to go ahead and put a little bit of brown on it. I don't know. Um, let me think about it for a second. All right, I thought about it. Uh, I think I'm going to just put a smidge of brown. So we tried the... Uh, we tried using the same technique to put brown on there and uh, it clearly uh, didn't work out so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of brush or a little bit of paint on my brush and see what we do is we take it and you wipe it down until you almost don't see any coming off the brush anymore. That, my friends, is dry brushing. And then we're just going to go through here and just hit this lightly like this. All the way down. What we start seeing is uh, it just starts looking sort of old and, and haggardy. Um, because haggardy, I invent words, and that's one of them. Uh, I didn't put too much on there, but it just the effect of adding the brown, I really think is kind of neat. Just sort of dry brushing it on there. Again, watching out for the heels, watching out for the points. So we don't take our beautifully detailed turnout and make it inoperable because we covered over the electrical parts of it. So that looks kind of old, and oh, I just got my heels, look at that. That looks kind of old, that looks kind of weathered. Um, now that may be more work than you want to do, maybe it's more work than's even necessary, but you know, that's how I did it. So for now, I'm going to call that a wrap. We're going to see how this looks when we get it all into the, the layout. So what happens next? Well, what happens next is I'm going to get my, uh, my cutter over here. We're going to cut out some of these logs and then um, and glue them to this sucker and uh, see if we can put it on the layout. Won't that be fun? I think it will be. Let's get our chopper back out and start laying some logs on this thing. Now, we figure out the length we want. Let's say for this first one, I'm saying something like that from rail joiner center to rail joiner center and then we'll cut it now in my opinion because of these radiuses logs obviously they didn't bend them so we're not going to bend them we're going to put these straight pieces in kind of where we think they go and ultimately as long as in in the real world these tracks uh, don't uh, start wobbling around and stuff it doesn't matter it's going to look pretty good i think so let me grab another little piece of log here quote unquote, and go ahead and figure this one out, not that long, again watch your thumb when you get in here <clears throat> on the uh, the chomper because you're just going to chomp your thumb, <clears throat> so this is the inside one, this is the outside one, so I use super glue for everything, uh, like I said, and so we're going to need some super glue to put this on. And that one we're going to put right about there. So if I go ahead and drop maybe two or three drops on here, it should ultimately hold it down. A little bit there, let's say there and there. Like that. And we'll just hold that in there for a second. Give the super glue a little bit of a chance to set up. And voila, we're on our way to laying track, baby. That one goes there, and this one needs to go parallel, pretty much parallel to it. Although, um, this, again, we're not gonna measure anything. We're gonna make this random because I really think these things slipped and slided, oh, slipped and slided, uh, slipped and slided all over the place. Um, just because of the of nature and uh, and the, the loads put on these things, so we're just gonna do it that way. Get that one where I want it there. Get it where I want it there. Push down. Hold it for a second. And that one's down. That'll sit like this. <clears throat> so look at that. We got logs glued to track. We're getting there, people. Now I want to make some that are uh, ten feet long, like we said before. 
10 uh, ish feet. I'm not going to set a stop this time. I'm just going to eyeball where it goes once I get a measurement for the first one. And 10 feet looks to be right about here. I'm going to mark with my thumb, put this in here, and so that comes out to be on this thing, this little yellow line there. We'll just say that yellow line is 10 feet. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, I shot that one across the table. Six. I'm cutting eight. I don't know how many we need. I'm just cutting eight to get started so we can move along with this process and not keep you guys up all night. All right, so eight of those things cut. <clears throat> now, it is my intention, my friends, to lay these in like that and super glue them on. I'm going to eyeball their distances again, just like everything else. It's like we'll glue those two in, then we'll glue one in the center between them, and then maybe one here and one here and one here and one there something like that um, once I glue this in I'll hold it back up and we can we can take a look-see but uh, so far so good I'm, I'm kind of digging this uh, but here's the thing <laughs> when this whole thing is set and done and we put this on the layout and uh, if it's all squirrely and wobbly then this entire series, or at least half of it, needs to get ejected, and we got to come up with something new. So um, if you're watching this, then it worked. Uh, if you're not watching it, then pretend I never brought this up. So here we go. Let's take those and put them there. Same story. We're going to put a little super glue here, and a little super glue here, and get it as centered as my eyeball will do it. I am not trying to center center it because they move around a little bit. That, that's, that's been my point. And I'll just keep saying it, just a smidge, a smidge. In the real world, they would have these braces that went from this log to that log to keep it from rolling, but they're so they're so small that I, even if I tried to simulate it, it would just look like a piece of dust on the layout. So we're just going to pretend that that is there in that... Uh, Whoever comes to look at this layout will just assume the engineers knew what they were doing, <clears throat> even if they didn't. So that's kind of that's kind of what we're trying to get done right now um, to get those logs on there. So when it sits down, it'll look like that. There's like a side view of it. See how they're kind of kind of all uneven. As we look through there, uh, I like that. I think maybe actually I made them a little too uneven, but this is back in the back. No one's going to see it. We can, uh, yeah, they're on there good too. We, we can modify the procedure as, as we move forward because this is hidden behind a little hill anyway. That's why I kind of been starting at the back and going that way because if I don't like something, we can just stop doing it. So I'm going to go through now and um, put the rest of this on and then we're going to go up and see how this fits on the layout, okay? So this is the, uh, the finished product here. You can see on here that um, we got all the, all the sticks on. You see how the logs are kind of the geometry of how they're following the, the rails and then the, the beveled edges to get into the, the diverging rails. And then just kind of the way I got the logs positioned. Uh, I'm really, really happy with the way this came out and I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of it works out on the layout. And we're back in the studio. Wow finally finished something on the old BSR, didn't we? Um, I've got to tell you, I'm really happy with the way this is coming out. The treatments we've given it, the logs on the bottom, I'm very encouraged about the future development of the logging camp. As I said, uh, next week we're going to stab that under the Hillbilly Bridge and start laying stuff off of it and we're really going to pick up some momentum in getting this logging camp done in four or five episodes. So uh, I hope you tune in then and check that out. All right, now as promised, the special announcement. Hey everyone, I'm Steve Brown with It's My Railroad and sometimes I get sidetracked. Well, there you go. More on that next week. Hey, if you haven't been over to the It's My Railroad channel yet, why don't you do that right now? This episode is just one in a series of episodes beginning with the philosophy and reasons behind 
the logging camp upgrade and then continue on to the point that you just saw right now. Um, it's a great time, lots of people getting involved, lots of great tips coming from the community. It's a great time, you don't wanna miss any of it. Also, uh, if you like this video, how about just one of those deals? I give one to you at the end of every episode. Uh, anyway, uh, there's that. And then if you know anybody that wants to get into model railroading or is thinking about it or somebody that can use this information, it's okay to share the video with them. I won't mind. I promise. Now let me ask you this question. If you haven't started building your model railroad yet, what are you waiting for? Six lords a-leaping? You got about eight more months. <laughs> All right, thanks again for watching. My name is Steve Brown, and I will see you next time. I got spit in my mouth. I can't talk with all the spit in my mouth right now. What's that about? Who even knew that was possible? I didn't even know that was a thing.